All right, ladies and gentlemen, the date is August 22nd. It is a Tuesday and it is 2023. So what happened yesterday with Faraday Future? They had their earnings report, right? Uh, they, they did miss on earnings, but not by a large amount. However, like we said before, like has already been established, it's about the emotions of the event, the investors, the emotional market. How will they interpret this? So far, it's negative. So far, you have a sell-off. And the last time I checked, the stock was sitting at 0.89. This is the lowest it's been in months. So it's been a while since we've seen the teens. It's kind of a bummer. If you are an investor in, in, in Faraday Future, who knows, you're probably thinking about selling or you probably sold out or whatever. If you're more optimistic, you look at this as a opportunity to get in and, and average down. Or you just look at it as, you know what, I'm going to sit it out and see what's going to happen going forward. Of course, the company has some potential. Of, of They're at a production level. They're ready to launch off of the ground level. They've already created that foundation for themselves, right? So if you're optimistic, you're looking at it that way and you're saying, all right, this is a little bit of turmoil leading into what we believe is going to be an eventual um, good future for them, right? Also, when you look at the overall big picture, we've been, a, we've been in a bull market for quite a while now and that can't last forever. When a bear market, I'm sorry, we've been in a bear market for quite a while now and at the end of every bear market is what a bull market so if we can see that turning around it would be kind of like a rising tide raises all of the ships right the economy gets a little bit better people invest a little bit more what is your tolerance for something like this do you say, forget it, I'm out? Or do you say, I'm sticking with it? I want to see I want to see it through. I don't want to sell out at this level and then check later and see how it blew up on me. Or, you know, you can just say, I'm done with that. You know, I'm not going to go any further with this stock. I've taken my chances. I'll cut my losses and I'll move on to something else. And all of those emotions are, are valid. This is what the market is made out of. It's made out of different people with different agendas and different strategies and different feelings. So the market is going to reflect that. As for me, I said this was going to be a longer term hold. And I meant that not years, but maybe months. And I wanted to see what this stock was going to show me. Um, and over the past few months that I've been checking out Faraday, I've been very optimistic at certain points, but at this point right now, I'm not so optimistic on the stock, to be quite honest with you. And if you look at its history, you look at in 2021 when it was at around 18 plus a share, and you look at it now under 20 cents a share, you, if you were just looking at stock price, and you were judging this company on its stock price, you would think that right now it's at its lowest point as a company. But you would be wrong because it is actually the opposite. Because right now, after all of the turmoil that they went through, after all of the ups and downs that they went through, they're actually in the best position that they've ever been. They've delivered some of their vehicles. They have their production ready and just ready to go. So. They hadn't been at this point before. So why was the stock in the $18 range before? It was all about partic it was all about anticipation. Anticipation of this company being great one day. And so that anticipation started to wear off when they started having issues with their money, their funding, right? So people started losing confidence in this in this stock. And that's what's reflected here. Even though they've reached these milestones, they are still not convincing people to invest, at least not 
yet. So this is the trick. Do you stay in? Do you wait for the turn to happen? Do you wait for a pivot point? Or do you say, I'm out? And I guess that's the question of the day. Like, what do you think about Faraday? Now, that will be your that will be me asking your opinion. Now, my opinion in general, I say again, they have great potential. What they propose to do, what they are aspiring to do, is to be a disruptor in the in the EV space. Do they have the potential for that? Of course they do. Um, they do have to fight against certain things that are kind of out of their control. Supply chains are not as fluid as they were. The market is, like I said, it's, it's a bear market. And this is a luxury product. It is an expensive product. It is not going to be sold to your average Joe. Your average Joe cannot afford a car that's about the, the price of a house. 300000 plus. It is a very um, sophisticated and futuristic vehicle that I'm sure people would love to get their hands on it with some of the latest AI um, technology in it. Of course, it's something that it looks great. Um, But there are some things, like I said, that are against it, that are fighting against it. And now another thing about it um, that I'd say is a negative against it would be the infrastructure for just EVs in general. It's not quite up to snuff yet. Now, recently I had a trip in New York and I made a bad decision by renting a Tesla. I had never driven a Tesla before. I went with Hertz and Hertz just defaulted me a Tesla. I didn't change it. I said, you know what? Let me take this opportunity to drive a Tesla. It was a bad experience for me. Now, the car itself, I liked it. I love the way it drove. I love the way it it felt in there. But I spent a majority of my time trying to find EV stations to charge up. And that's unacceptable. If you don't have your own charging station, do do, do not get a Tesla. That's my opinion. Because, especially if you live in New York, it's gonna be really, really tough for you to find charging stations. And then it becomes expensive. The charging is not that much. But the charging stations are sometimes in in lots, parking lots where you have to pay to park your car there. And that can be way more expensive than the actual charge itself. So anyway, guys, that's the negative side of it. The positive side of it is that, yes, we are as a civilization transitioning from the traditional gasoline driven cars to EV. And there's some optimism behind that. Um, If you hang in there, you are not only at the ground floor, you are basically under the ground floor right now on FFIE. And if this thing were to blow up, you can say I was there before anything started really popping off. That's the opportunity that is potentially ahead of us. So with that being said, that's my opinion on it. That's that's rounding it off Um, the other stocks that I've been following, um, SoFi. SoFi is now, last time I checked, at $8.21. Um, BLFS, BLFS BioLife Solutions has risen into the $11 range again. So um, they look like they're trying to make a move up. I have not gotten into it yet, but I'm considering it um, as it makes its little pivot point and turn around. So that's all that I wanted to speak to you about, guys about as I give you guys some some views of downtown Tampa on this beautiful day. It is right now uh, just about 90 degrees. Um, Pretty clear skies out there. Uh, Just a a scattering, maybe just a tiny bit of clouds out there. But it's it's a great day. Great day to be in an air conditioned car. You know, Um, far cry from my huge, my, my, my eight to nine mile walk that I had last week this day. So I just want to leave you with that. I'll leave you with some of these tunes, with some of this music, and I will see you on the next video.